Hello, everybody. So in uh, this exciting adventure, we're following along with a post on eMasterCam from Jake L. Asking how he can get Swarf Motion that specifically looks like this on his floor surface, but he needs to reverse the cut order because what he has here is a Swarf toolpath, and there'll be a link to the uh, eMasterCam post so you can download the file from there if you want. But basically, he likes this pattern, and he's trying to finish this floor section, as you can see. And the only problem is he'd really like to start from the uh, outside and work his way in. So basically the reverse order. Now, Swarf machining, or five axis Swarf milling, doesn't really have a lot of control over that. So anybody who's tried this, you know, it does have multi-cuts and you can tell it 12 layers, but the way that it's designed, it's gonna start where it starts, which is away from the wall and it's trying to finish into it. Luckily, we can do this with a parallel toolpath as long as we know a few little tricks. And this is one of my favorite party tricks to break out with a parallel toolpath. So I'm gonna jump into Unified. And yes, I attend very boring parties, obviously. All right, so first stop here is our cut pattern. And you know, immediately what you're thinking here is we're going to be taking this curve that he made and we're going to be applying that to this bottom shape, but that's not actually what we're gonna be doing. What we need is a single pass on this edge up here. So I'm gonna add a uh, curve section, we're gonna make that a parallel, and I'm going to choose this top rail. Now, if you grab this file, do be careful. He made this shape obviously with a, uh, with a surface, um, sweep right here so he took this straight line and he swept it along this top arc you got to be careful because what we want is only from this top corner over to here so just do be careful if you're if you're playing with that file exactly as it was now the surface that we're going to machine it against is this one that he created over here just the the vertical surface right here now we can tell this thing that we want to do a specific number of cuts and we just want one cut other than that, all I'm gonna do is set my tool axis control. This is a three axis toolpath, so I'm gonna set it as such, and I'm gonna turn off collision control for just a moment. So we can see what we get. Well, what we get here is uh, well, pretty much exactly what you'd hopefully expect from a parallel toolpath. We're gonna to come in and we're going to be machining right along that edge. We're gonna get a nice straight line there. You know, okay, cool. Now, obviously we don't necessarily want the fact that it's gouging into this part or the fact that it's not touching the floor there, but that's okay. That's a problem for future us. Oh wait, the future is now, let's solve it. So in order to take this toolpath and cause it to project down onto the surface, we're gonna be using the collision control options. So I'm just gonna turn on this first group. Now I know a lot of you guys have watched my previous videos and so they do go into the collision control strategies a little bit more. The thing that we're going to be looking at now is the retract tool option. So with your retract tool, you do have a bunch of different ways you could retract. In our case, I just wanted to retract along the tool axis. I told this is told my tool axis control. This is a three axis tool path, so it's always gonna be pointing vertical. And what I'm gonna say is if you hit something, I just want you to retract along the Z. Now, in our case, what we're looking at to hit is this uh, surface down here. So let's come down to our avoidance geometry. And I'm gonna just choose those three. Now, one thing I would caution here as a general note, whenever you're doing something like this, where we're really relying on this for the finish toolpath, um, I would recommend bumping up our tolerance. So I would say that we really want to be aware of this thing within maybe two tenths. All right, so that, and the reason for that is what we're essentially doing is a projection toolpath and we're, we're asking for the tolerance of this curved surface to be improved there. So I'm gonna hit apply just to see what that toolpath looks like. <clears throat> Excuse me. And what you're gonna see here is that now we are ramping up along this cone, which is what we wanted. However, it's still not dropping down there, but that's okay, this is where the, uh, that, advanced control comes in. So let's look at our advanced options for strategy number one, which is right under this tree. 
And here we have the ability to drop the tool down wherever needed. So what that's going to do is act as a project toolpath where it literally drops the toolpath down onto our collision surfaces. So let's take a look at this thing in backplot now and see what we got. So now it's following along beautifully there. And we get very minimal vectors along the straight lines, which is perfect. So lots of resolution where we need it and little resolution where we don't. So that's pretty spot on. Now what that's giving us is the equivalent of just the raw swerf toolpath um, that he chose originally. It doesn't give us the offsets, but that's okay. We can absolutely make it. You'll notice that uh, this toolpath is also a little bit better quality here around some of these. And that is because we bumped up the tolerance on our projection. So now for the next trick, we're going to come over and do multi-passes. And in our case, um, that's going to be under the roughing section here. And we want multi-passes. Now, I just happened to write this down off screen, but what he had before in that previous toolpath was um, 12 steps at uh, 0975. So we're going to just hit apply, see what that looks like. Okay. Well, not spectacular. <laughs> I mean, overall, it looks, you know, kind of this the right idea. But you see it's doing these huge gaps in the corner. Like, what what's going on here? These big fishtails are, are happening. So... Uh, without getting too deep into how the parallel or you could do the same thing in morph toolpath works, basically what's happening is it's taking this surface that we've created and in the background, it's offsetting those 12 times in this case by, you know, 0975. So the issue that we have is if you were to take this, this shape right here, and I'm just going to come over to my surfaces tab and I'm going to say, uh, offset on that guy. Where's our offset button? Up oh, there it is. All right. Then I'm going to say that I want to offset this thing, and I'm just going to offset it. Obviously, across here, you know, we're we're multiple inches, right? Um, I'm just going to say one inch. Well, if you are following along, you probably can tell what's happening right now. So, it's literally following that exact offset surface not exactly what we wanted because we wanted basically we wanted the surfaces to intelligently trim in the corners luckily we could do that um, no, i don't actually want that even though it is a pretty little pagoda but in order to do that we actually have to go all the way back up to the cut pattern page so let's go up here to cut pattern and i'm going to turn on round corners now the round corners feature, as you can see from the uh, from the picture, is basically designed to deal with this exact scenario. So let's just hit apply and see what we get. Hey, now we're talking. Look at that. Great. So the only problem that remains now is obviously we have some linking that could be cleaned up, no big deal, but the pattern itself is still starting in the middle and working its way out, which Jake would prefer that it does not do. Luckily, we can change all of that in the roughing sorting. So let's head back down to our roughing options here. And all we have to do is basically reverse the entire toolpath. Um, I'm just going to tell it reverse order of the complete toolpath. And there we go. Green check that. And there we go. Starting on the outside, a nice clean toolpath with uh, fairly minimal vectors. I mean, now... The only way you could actually get better than this as far as vector density and everything would be to use a 3D toolpath that could filter that into arcs. Of course, the multi-axis toolpaths aren't necessarily convert. Uh, they're not really concerned with vector density or making arcs and planes because that's not really multi-axis. It's jammed most of the time. They, they don't exist in normal like XZ, XY, YZ planes. So... Yeah, there we go. Now, we could clean up the linking, of course, um, just to make this a, a finished, uh, polished toolpath here. Move this over to the side. You can see that it's retracting in here. And we, we talked about this in some previous videos. But the idea here is that any gap between the, uh, between the movement, so in this case, the gap would be from this slice out to the next slice, that's less than 100% of the tool diameter. This is a half-inch tool. 
it's going to do a blend spline and otherwise it's going to do a retract to the clearance area which is being automatically figured out and a little little big so what i think we should probably do is just make this thing um retract maybe to the rapid distance um, and then we'll also do the same for that one and now let's take a look at that toolpath okay that's a little bit better you know obviously jake can uh tweak and change and play and turn on lead in lead out if he wants thanks for watching